Blessing. This is Pastor A.K. Paul Hammond. We want to welcome you into another Bible study. And so we just give God the glory and the honor for today. And just like many times before, we like to open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for all that you have done, all that you're doing in each and every one of our lives. We know that you're able. And so we continue to trust you through the hard times, the tough times, the trying times in our life. We ask, God, that you continue to bless your people in a mighty way. Continue to lead us and guide us, God, through your word. God, I pray that you continue to give us uh, grace and to strengthen our life here on earth as we journey for you. We ask, God, that our life will make impact for the better. And so, God, we pray that you'll touch, God, touch in a mighty way those who are hurting, afflicted, need healing, God, and deliverance. We ask in God that you'll cover hearts that have been broken based on loss of loved ones. We continue to pray for Sister Starla, God, one of our members who have lost a child. And we just ask in God that you continue to touch God's lives in this country, God, in every way possible. Continue to allow them to see the error in their ways, mistakes in their walks, that we may be able to be better and stronger and wiser for you. We ask in God that you will take forth in this Bible study that you will teach us through your word. I just want to be a willing vessel for you. And so tonight we ask that you will just reveal more of yourself to us. Let us, God, understand your word, bring clarity to the study. And we thank you, God, for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Continue to watch out, God, for us on this journey because we cannot see the dangers that lie before us. But we know that you are powerful and a present help and you there with us every step of the way so we give you honor and glory in jesus name we pray amen and amen and so uh as we get ready to move into our study tonight i you know it won't be long and try to keep brevity but the hump day scripture tonight psalm 46 and 1 psalm 46 and 1 god is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And that comes from Psalms 46 and 1. And so we thank God tonight. We also have the term of theology. Uh, it's dealing with the day of the Lord. You, many times we read the Bible and we've heard the phrase, the day of the Lord. What does that mean? It's the period of judgment and restoration at the end of time. As God punishes the wicked and sets up his kingdom here on earth. And so that is when we talk about the Lord's Day. And some uh, and a scripture that backs it up and we kind of read and if you read that chapter and kind of deal with that verse and kind of pry into it and cross-reference. Uh, 1 uh, Corinthians 1 and 8. 1 Corinthians 1 and 8 will be a good starting point for you. But the day of the Lord is the period of judgment and restoration um, at the end of time as God punished the wicked and then sets up his kingdom here on earth. So tonight, as we continue to venture into our study, we're dealing with the nine, the divine nine. And, and that is uh, talking about in reference to uh, the fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5, 22 uh, through verse 23. Uh, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. And so definitely this series is a spins uh, off of the divine link and primary focus on what in our life that we should be producing uh, as in because of our relationship with Christ. Uh, we acknowledge the power of the Holy Spirit that fulfilled the mandate of our, over our lives to produce much fruit. And so without God, without Christ, without the power of the Spirit of God, we can do nothing. And so our three objectives as we move through the lesson is number one, recognize the indicators um, of cohesion uh, due to the Holy Spirit. So what we're going to talk about is we can deal with how um, we can see in our life as the Holy Spirit moves and the trends and in our action, the difference that he's making in each and every one of us. And also we understand that there's a level of growth and maturity that comes as we move and operate in the spirit of God. And then we see uh, unity can be formed, consistency, consistency of, in who we are and how we handle situations 
and our and who we are within body, soul, and mind. Consolidation, and uh, we see uh, as we move in the spirit of God in our life, we can touch and agree with others that are moving in that same direction, and we can form a united whole of our strong body for Christ. Uh, and then secondly, we identify each characteristic. So we're going through each characteristic, and tonight we're dealing with goodness and, and that comes from the fruit of the spirit of God. And we all thank God today that God is good, amen. And so how do we fall into that picture when the fruit of the spirit, into, it, the spirit of God brings that, uh, that powerful element of that fruit into your life called goodness? How does that look? How does that shape? Uh, then we explore uh, the divine nine and how it plays out in our life as believers in our community. So the Holy Spirit, we thank God that God allows us a part of his presence to dwell in uh, each of us as believers, shaping us so that we can operate in godly character, the character that God has created us to be. And as we look at goodness tonight, we're looking at also, I'd like to share with a few scriptures, uh, Romans 15 and 14. And myself also, I am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness. Paul is, Paul is speaking. Filled with knowledge and able to admonish one another. Build one another up. Help one another along this journey. And so goodness in your heart, when you feel with goodness, you are able to help others. Amen. And so all of us are want the ability, uh, for the God-given ability to help others, to be a blessing in other people's lives. Help to lift them up. Help them build them up. Help them see their area in their ways so they can be greater and stronger and make the correction in life. They help them build them up in their weaknesses, in their weak areas. And even when they feel weak themselves, beaten and, 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 and feel like they're neglected or downtrodden, uh, we want to operate in that spirit of God to keep them lifted, to keep them strong and focused on this journey. In Ephesians uh, 5 and 9, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And definitely, uh, definitely, we're going to move and operate in the spirit of God moves inside of us. We can operate as lights in this world, displaying God's goodness through us, uh, giving him the glory in everything that we do. And I don't know about you, but I want the spirit of God to move and to just shape me so that I can operate according to these, these, these productions that are... Uh, the Holy Spirit is allowing to come forth in my life through the power of God and that link that I have with Christ. Matthew 7, 16 through 19 says, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes? Are figs gathered from, from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit but a bad tree, bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. And a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that doeth not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And so definitely we want to be able to bear good, good fruit. God knows our heart. He knows our intention. He knows how we move forward. And so we want the Holy Spirit to produce in our life so that we can move and, and operate in the goodness of God that created us and called us to be as he used us in these days that we live in. And so, I, so we ask it, God, God, show us the way. Help us and strengthen us through the power of your anointing. And so uh, as we dig a little bit deeper tonight in goodness, uh, I want you to understand there's a difference between uh, kindness and goodness. There's a difference between kindness and goodness. Um, see, uh, the kindness mainly involves being generous or considerate uh, or helping others, whereas goodness uh, involves the righteousness in our action. Doing the right thing. And all of us say, yes, we, I, I thank God we have kindness in our life and we're going to deal with that. And also we have uh, goodness that the Holy Spirit empowers us to operate in. And so that we can have right actions, doing the right thing, doing the right deeds so that we can bless the kingdom of God and be that representative that God has called us to be. How many understand that you are an ambassador for Christ? And so we want God to use us 
in that mighty way so that we can impact others for the kingdom of God. And so that's how that play out in our kingdom and in the kingdom of God. And as we move uh, in our communities, we display how good God is and we represent him as ambassadors of showing how the kingdom operates in everyday life. And so um, some would argue that kindness is an attitude and goodness is an action. And therefore, yes, uh, others would argue uh, that kindness is a property of how you treat others. Goodness is a property of how you are. So it's something about you, something what God has made you and crafted you that reflects out in your actions, not just of kindness and showing people that you can treat them right, but something deeper there that deeper connection that has when you have a relationship with God and you're linked to the vine and the Holy Spirit is producing through you and you understand that I can do because of Christ. And so uh, there are some that would suggest goodness is the quality of being morally good or virtuous. And so, 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 so we could kind of fall into that line and hold that thing and we understand that Goodness, amen, uh, is a spirit field. And so we understand that that's what you receive and how you operate and who you become when God is moving and working in your life. The word goodness, the word goodness means to be God-like or be like God. Uh, that doesn't mean you become a God. No, 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 no. We're not, we don't become a God, and we, but we become in similitude of what God has called us to be and what God has created us to be. And so uh, we have some resemblance to our Father, which is in heaven, and we operate in the spirit of goodness. So goodness of character, readiness to practice all the Christian virtues that are laid out uh, for the body of Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. So goodness in character. God created us. And, and, and when he created the earth and, and in the book of Genesis, he looked at it and said it was good and, and very good. But man made the choice to put a space between good, put a space between the G-O and the O-D. And so what you're saying, Paul, I'm looking at me. Can I break that down for you? So where God, when he created us, and, and he placed us uh, in the position, amen, Adam and Eve as humanity representative and that it, all humanity would flourish and birth from uh, through the power and the creation of God. Uh, man made the choice to put the G-O in the O-D and place the space in between. So what, what would you say, Parham? So what I'm saying, man, uh, Adam and Eve, they had, they, they had, was, it was good, God, good creation, but they go in a OD. They go into an OD. What you mean, Parham? They went and they, they go and they moved into an overdose situation because they overdose on self. And we, uh, many times in our time that we live in, so many people are going and over D, ODing on self. Selfishness comes into their life. And selfishness is a combatant to goodness. And so man, because he wanted to please himself, he wanted to see how far he could go on his own, outside of God, in the garden, rebelled and made a choice to put a space between what God has created as good. And that space caused him to be moved out of position, caused him to lose his value. And now only through Christ, who can pull that word back together through the relationship with the link of him can put it back to good. And so that's why we need Christ in our life. That's why we need God. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit moving on the inside so we don't overdose on self and move out of the character and the shaping 
and the likeness of which God is trying to get us to move. So, as we look at the Greek word of it, agastosene, is goodness for the benefit of others. And I know what you mean by the goodness for the benefit of others. And so we operate in the character of God shaping you and you move in, and allow the spirit of God to move you into that area of goodness in your life. Then you start in the sense of benefiting others. That putting selfishness aside. And so when we see that, we see that in the mere example of Christ Jesus uh, through the gospel, that he's able and willing to give his life for humanity. That is goodness. When you are able to give it all for somebody else's good, and Christ went on the cross and hung, bled, and died for us, was placed in the bar bar tomb, but early the third day on Sunday morning, he rose with all power in his hand. He made, he lived his life so that he can benefit others. And that's what God is looking for all of us to do, is to take up that character that's shaping the field, yield to that movement of the producing power of the Holy Spirit and live a life that you're going to be a blessing to others, to build up others, to make that sacrifice, to help others along this way. And that kind of shapes our goodness of what we're looking for and that God can use us to the uttermost. And it's not about self, but also it's about being selfless, to helping somebody else along this journey. And as we get ready to close and let me shape it up and wrap it up with our feature word or our acronym, GOOD, and that's godliness. The G is for godliness. Godliness is based on God's grace and mercy. So when we think about goodness, we understand that is a part of our godliness or holiness based on God's grace and mercy. And not anything that we could do on our own to get it uh, other than have the, make the choice to believe that God can and that God is able to trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So it's not on us, amen, it's on what God is developing in us and the godliness that he's placing in us through the power of his spirit that moves and shapes us and molds us, molds us to produce goodness in our life so that we can impact our community, bring unity, to bring people back together again to bring this thing uh, back to God. And so God can use you as he can use anyone that he chooses. So be available for God use by operating in the spirit of God and letting goodness reflect through your life to touch others as well as bless the kingdom of God. And the O is for observe God's word. So in order for the truly to operate in goodness of God, we have to be observe it and observe God's word, recognize when God's speaking to us and being obedient to that. And so we have to be good observers of what God is teaching us uh, through principles and through life and through his word. And as the Holy Spirit continue to open our understanding of the word of God so that we can operate and produce much fruit in the era of goodness. And the others is, oh, others, just to wrap it up and sum it up and bring it back around. We understand that we value other people and we understand that when God is talking about goodness, he sees us as understanding, recognizing people, persons around us who have value and need to be valued in the light. And so we are uplifting and we encourage one another on this journey as we make every step and every step, steps in your life. And when we think about steps, steps we think about moving forward and or moving higher. And so when somebody talks about steps, God is allowing us to step in this area of goodness, meaning that we're moving forward into it, amen, and then we're moving upward, amen, on an upward climb, being all we can be for the kingdom. And D is understand this is divinely inspired. If you're going to be good for God, amen, and understand that God is always good when we're not good. 
But amen, God so not robbery and loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us so that one day, amen, based on the relationship with him, that we can start moving in his goodness and operating in his goodness with clarity and right intention to help build those and help honor the kingdom of God that is before us. And so we want to be in good standing with God. And being in good standing with God is letting the spirit of God move in your life so that you can operate in goodness, bearing much fruit of that kind. And how many understand that a tree is known by the fruit it's bear? So help somebody along this journey. Understand who you are and whose you are. Be willing to help somebody out of true intention, not because you just want to do a good deed, uh, not because you want to pat on the back, but you truly want God's goodness to reflect through you based on his connection to you and your connection to others. So thank God today for the divine knife and the divine link in our life to help us to be a great representative of Jesus Christ. So we thank you for studying another taking time out of your day and being with another Bible study with us. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you'll bless your people in, in, in every way possible. Continue to bless I Am A Part Church family. Uh, allow our finances to be increased so we can do greater ministry. Uh, allow our hands, God, to be active working for the kingdom. Allow our mind to be kingdom's mindset so that we can produce and have great activities and move according to your will to bless those around us. Then we ask, God, that you'll touch all those, God, that are connected to this ministry. We pray that you'll continue to bless those, God, that are watching. Uh, we ask, God, that you continue to cover their life in a mighty way. Protect us all along this journey. We love you and we honor you and to this day and this night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And if you'd like to partner with us, you can go to www.imapartnbc.com and you'll find all your online giving options as well as viewing options. Or you can write to us. We would love to hear from you. Uh, P.O. Box 2772. P.O. Box 2772. That's West Memphis, Arkansas, 72301. Love you. God bless you. Amen. I hope to see you next week. In honor of social distance, distancing, let me give you a great big hug. You like you need a hug today. God bless.